if I have a tennis ball in my hand, and I drop the tennis ball from a certain height, give it no speed, and it will bounce back, then it can never bounce higher than where it started from. If it did, then we physicists would say that is a gross violation of the conservation of energy, and that is the holiest of all laws in physics. It cannot go higher. Suppose the object has a mass m and is a distance h from the floor. Here's the floor, here's the object, h. We associate with the position of that object an energy that has a name. We call that potential energy. And that potential energy is m G H. You already know what G is. Well, H is this distance in meters. So when the object is here on the floor, H is zero. So there is no potential energy. As the object goes down, it picks up speed. And we associate with speed energy, which we call kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy of an object with mass m is one-half m v squared, m is the mass, and v is the speed of that object. If the object goes down and it hits the floor, then the potential energy is zero, and all that energy is now converted to kinetic energy, because energy, we believe, is conserved. Now, when it hits the floor, some of that kinetic energy may be converted into heat because of the compression. If it were a tennis ball, that would certainly happen. So in other words, when it bounces back, the total energy is no longer the full MGH, but is a little less, and so it won't bound as high. But there is no way that it could come up higher than H. Suppose it could come after one bounce up here. Well, that would solve the world energy problem. <laughs> because you simply sit down and you watch the ball game, and there goes the ball higher, and the second one, it goes again higher. But why? If it goes the first time higher, it will do that the second time. And so after an hour, that thing is about a few thousand meters in the sky, and when it comes down on the floor, it has an enormous speed, great amount of kinetic energy, and so you got energy out of nothing. But there is no such thing in physics as a free lunch, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> so the object can never go any higher than H. And with a tennis ball, there is also what we call the dissipation of heat when it hits the floor. Now, the situation is difficult with a pendulum, because a pendulum doesn't hit the floor, and so there is no heat loss because it doesn't hit the floor. So if you bring a pendulum at a certain distance above the ground, like this, and you let it swing, when it comes back here, it is almost exactly at that same height. Cannot be higher. That would be a violation of the conservation of energy. But since the air drag is so small, there is almost no damping. And in fact, when you saw the demonstration I just did, you may have noticed that you really didn't see this. It really kept going and it kept going. As long as you realize that if I release it from a certain location with zero speed, it can never, when it comes back, be higher than that location. This whole idea is behind demolishing buildings. With a building demolishing, you take a huge mass, you lift it up over a distance H, and then you put your target, which is your house, or whatever it is, right at the bottom, when all this potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy, and so this object is hit with an enormous amount of energy, a high speed, and you demolish thereby the wall. Here we have a glass plate. You better go out of the way because it's going <laughs> this is a dangerous experiment. <laughs> it's a glass one. 
So if I bring this object exactly at that glass wall, and if I'm clever enough to let it go with zero speed, it could not break that glass. But if my hands shake a little, and if I give it a little push, then of course it can come back, and it may want to go higher than this, and that would mean I know you guys. <laughs> Students love it when the glass breaks. <laughs> That's why they pay such a high tuition at MIT. That's okay, just take that off. Now comes an experiment which is emotionally the most difficult for me of this whole evening. I'm going to put my life on the line to show you that I'm really a believer of the conservation of energy. And you will see how I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the place of the glass <laughs> and I'm going to hold this object at my chin and I cannot move any further back, so there's no cheat here. <laughs> I'm going to release it right from my chin here. You realize, as you have just seen, <laughs> that the slightest push and this will be my last lecture. <laughs> and no book signing afterwards. <laughs> so I need your collaboration. When I count down from three to zero, no noise, no coughing, and I would even appreciate it if for those three seconds you would not even breathe. And I have to tell you something. I couldn't sleep all night. <laughs> I'm going to close my eyes. I don't want to see it. And I'm going to count down from three to zero. Three, two, one, zero. I normally, after this demonstration, tell the class, physics works and I'm still alive. <laughs> and when an article was written about me in the New York Times a few years ago, on the second page of the New York Times is the wisdom of the day. And the wisdom of the day was, physics works and I'm still alive. 